Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Now you got $64,000. Nailed it for $125,000. Believe it or not, the correct answer was traveling companion. Got it for $64,000. I'd like to go ahead and call my friend Jim Fletcher. Ask the audience what they think. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Hold on, wait a minute, Jason. Jason. You're not going to leave a lifeline on the table, are you? Well, sure. Take the 50-50 and see yeah, what happens. Yeah, you know, now you're Most people would be really shocked to hear me say this, but I'm going to go for, for D. John. Got it for $125,000! Just won a quarter million dollars! I've had a pretty good day. Uh, yes, you have. I'm going to call it quits here. Now, join us from New York for night 96 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you, thank you very much. Hi everybody, good evening and welcome to Thursday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You know, last night you saw that young man missed on the meaning of the word Sputnik, that old Russian uh, uh, Sputnik. Well, it means, of course, traveling companion. And you know, we always encourage our contestants to bring traveling companions with us. So now here's Linda Boone from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Didn't have a chance to say much to her last night because we're running out of time. We were expecting you to bring along, you know, one of your handsome boyfriends, maybe even a <laughs> husband or two. Nope. Instead, you Two? brought along <laughs> your sister, Rosemary. And it's yes, nice to have you here, Hi. Rosemary. So, Linda, you're a single lady. Yes, I am. And you're enjoying it. Yes, I am. And you're from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Yes. Tell us a little more about yourself. Um, well, I'm working as an IT recruiter in the Waltham area. I recruit uh, programmers, developers, um, software developers. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I'm from a family of six children, mm -hmm. one of the middle ones, where right. you had to speak up or you were not going to be heard at all. Yeah. And you went to Carnegie uh, Mellon? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I did my undergraduate work at Carnegie Mellon. And still have a warm place in your heart for that, for oh, that yes, uh, yes. campus, huh? Gorgeous. In fact, she says the most memorable place she's been to is the Carnegie Institute. Right. The is that art, a museum? It's a museum, library. Um, when I was young, I had art classes there mm -hmm. on Saturday mornings. And I'd wander through the Hall of Architecture, and they have a large skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm. So that was fun. And so all of your life you've been acquiring knowledge and yes. storing it away and waiting for this moment. Waiting for something to put it to use. All right, fine. Well, this is, okay. this is the place to do that. Now, you've won $1,000. You're 10 questions away from winning $1 million. Here's how we play. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. Once you reach the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with at least that much money. Of all three of your lifelines left, and that's important, 50-50, ask the audience and you can phone a friend. To play along with Linda, log on to ABC.com, click on the Enhanced TV logo, and play against everybody at home using ABC's Enhanced TV. It's a lot of fun. All right, Linda, are you ready? Rosemary, are you ready? Audience, are you ready? Yes! Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. We're going for $2,000 right now, Linda. Which of the following is country singer Tammy Wynette's signature song? Crazy? Stand by your man, still the one, achy, breaky heart. Um, the answer is B, stand by your man. Country uh, singer fan, are you? Yep. Good for you, stand by your man, your final answer? Yes, it is. You're absolutely right for $2,000. Here it is for $4,000. In what country would you find an enormous structure called the Millennium Dome? France, Australia, England, Egypt. Millennium Dome. Um, I am not certain on this, so I'd like to poll the audience. Okay, fine. Audience, Linda needs your help. The question is, in what country would you find an enormous structure called the Millennium Dome? On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, it's not overwhelming, but 45% uh, feel it's England and 30% say Australia. Uh, hmm. Not as helpful as I would have liked. Yeah. Um, you can always narrow it down by two and then take a look at it, or we can call somebody. 
An enormous structure. Somehow, I don't think in England they would have the space for something so large. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go with B, Australia. Gut feeling? Gut feeling. Final answer? Yes, it is. No, the audience was right. It's England. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, Linda Boone, I am very, very sorry. So am I. Yeah, too bad. All right. So you leave with $1,000. Thanks very much. Good luck to you. Let's go down. Too bad. Well, you know, I think we've only ever had two contestants go against the audience and get it right. It was a slim majority, but the audience is right 92% of the time, we found out, and so did Linda. But right now, we've got a brand new crop of contestants ready to go. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. And they are Paul Berenson, Denton, Texas. Jason Hirsch, Southfield, Michigan. Ron Slavero, Carruthers, California. Brad Knox, Menlo Park, California. Jeremy Conklin, Mineral City, Ohio. Jay Hergott, Northbrook, Illinois. Bob Schick, Lancaster, Ohio. Mike Kramer, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Sean Degler, Columbia, Missouri. Okay, contestants, welcome to the show. Now, here's how it works. In a moment, a question and four answers will appear on your screen. The one who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here. Thank you very much. Here comes the question. Put these TV villains in the order they debuted, starting with the earliest. Alexis Carrington, Riddler, J.R. Ewing, Tony Soprano. All right, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest villain. Yes, the Riddler. Then J.R. Ewing, Alexis Carrington, finally Tony Soprano. Let's see who got it right. In the fastest time, the winner is Jeremy Coughlin. Congratulations, Jeremy. Come on, let's do it. Let's play, okay? So Jeremy Conklin in our hot seat right now comes to us from Mineral City, Ohio. That's uh, near Cleveland, right? Uh, it's a little closer to Canton, near the, the Football Hall of Fame. Sure, absolutely. How old are you? 21. And you just got married last year? Yes, last year. Little August. baby at home? Yes, yeah. eight weeks old. And uh, wife, of course, at home with the baby. Yeah, yeah. So you brought along your mother. Yeah. Nice to have you here, Mrs. Conklin. How you doing? Good. Good. So Jeremy, tell me about yourself. You're 21 years old, and you, you work as a, as a matter of fact, you were supposed to start work today, right? Yes, I was. I, I just got offered a job, you know, starting today, and I had to call them and, of course, tell them I wouldn't be there. Yeah, because you're going for a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And if you win it, who needs their job, right? <laughs> yeah. So you know the rules, Jeremy, okay? You know about the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience phone a friend. Okay, Jeremy, let's get ready to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Here we go. $100 question, Jeremy, take a look. According to the old question, which came first, Jeremy, the chicken or the what? Turkey, egg, quiche, Big Mac. I'm gonna go with uh, B, egg. Yes, Jeremy, the egg is right, you won $100. $200. What is the radioactive material that settles over the Earth's surface after a nuclear explosion? Snow. Dandruff, fallout, purple haze. I think I need to do it this early, but I'm gonna have to use one of the lifelines. Um, I'm gonna pull the audience. Pull the audience, you can do that. Jeremy needs your help, everybody. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, there you go. 91% feel it's fallout. Well, still 
92. Sure. 92% of the time they're right, so I'm gonna go with C, Fallout. Final answer? Yes. Yes, Jeremy, it's Fallout. You've got it for $200. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Jeremy will be back. He's going for $300 when we return. Okay, Jeremy Conklin here from Mineral City, Ohio, in the hot seat right now, but I want to know who the 2% are who voted for dandruff. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Never a dull moment. Yeah. So, Jeremy, you, you got married, but you did it in a very romantic way, at least the proposal, huh? Yes. Tell us, everybody, tell everybody how you did it. Um, actually, we, I had to con her into opening presents at my mother's first, mm -hmm. before at home. Is this at Christmas? Yes, yeah. yes, at Christmas. And I um, actually bought two big balloons, helium balloons, tied the ring around the string and wrapped them up in a box. When she opened it, the balloons went floating up to the, uh, the ceiling and the ring was there just hanging. Wouldn't it be funny if she opened that box outside and the ring was gone? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Romantic. Yeah. We're up to $300. You're 13 questions away from a million. You burned one lifeline. You got two left. Let's do it. Let's play. Here it is now for $300. Tennis star Martina Hingis is named after what famous athlete? Martina Navratilova, Billie Jean King, Althea Gibson, Chris Everett. Um, I think I have to use my 50 50. Um, you sure? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it. Computer, take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Jeremy one wrong answer and the correct one. Now, would she be named after Martina or Althea? I'm gonna have to go with A, Martina, and a little bit. the obvious one. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay, final answer? Yeah. Yes, Jeremy, it's Martina Navratilova. Okay, we got one lifeline left, Jeremy. You seem too obvious. <laughs> well, we're going up. No, don't worry about that. You know, uh, uh, whatever comes to you. First instincts, all right? $500, take a look. What is the constitutionally prohibited practice of prosecuting someone twice for the same criminal offense? Double trouble, double jeopardy, double entendre, double hazard. I'm pretty sure of this one would be uh, B, double jeopardy. Right on the money, double jeopardy, $500. <laughs> now, Jeremy, you know, if you win $1,000 here, you can't leave with less than that if you win $32,000, but here it comes for $1,000. Since 1920, what state has held the nation's earliest presidential primary? Iowa, Vermont, Delaware, New Hampshire. Remember what the first primary is every election year? What state it's held in? Not right now, I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, now, on your lifeline, Think of somebody who might, uh, your last lifeline was phone a friend. Yeah. Got somebody who can help you? Stepfather Sam would know. Sam? Yeah. Your stepdad? Yeah. All right, fine. AT&T, please get uh, Sam on the line. We need him. Hello? Hello, Sam. Yes. Yeah, hi, Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hi, Regis. How you doing? Good. I'm here with Jeremy. And guess what? He needs your help. All right. Okay, so uh, in a moment, he's going to come on the line and ask you a question and give you four possible answers. One of them is the correct answer, okay? All right. All right, Jeremy, tell Sam all about it. You've got 30 seconds, and they start right now. Okay. Since 1920, what state has held the nation's earliest presidential primary? Iowa, Vermont, Delaware, or New Hampshire? I'm thinking Iowa, Jer. I'm not okay. exactly sure. Um, I'm about 60% sure it's Iowa, Jer. I don't okay. know. 
That's what I was leaning towards too, but okay, thanks. So I have no other choice, I guess I'll take A Iowa. Final answer? Yes. No, the correct answer is New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Jeremy, I'm sorry, but it was a lot of fun having yeah. you here. Good luck to you. Take good care of yourself, okay? Well, oh, that Jeremy. Won't forget him for a long time, and he won't forget us, I'm sure. But anyway, Iowa is a caucus, and we were looking for the first primary. And since 1920, that's been in New Hampshire. But we wish him good luck, and someday we hope he comes back. Now we still have eight more contestants ready to go, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these musicians named George in order of their birth, starting with the most recent. George Thurgood, George Gershwin, George Harrison, George Michael. All right, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent George. And there it is, George Michael, George Thurgood, George Harrison, George Gershwin. That's the right order. Who got it right in the fastest time? The winner is Bob Schick. Okay, Bob. Ready to play? We'll be right back. Bob Schick is going for it. Look how nice he looks. So, Bob Schick, another Ohioan is with us right now from Lancaster, Ohio. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Congratulations on your wardrobe. Angela picked it out. She did? Yes. Yeah. Based on anybody you know? <laughs> I guess not. All right. Tell us about yourself. You're, you're a guy who's done many things in, in your life, huh? Went yeah. to Ohio State for a year, left. What'd you do? Um, I joined the United States Navy for three years, mm -hmm. um, stationed in Newport, Rhode Island for the most part. Uh -huh. And then after that, I joined the Lancaster Fire Department. Ah, so you're a firefighter now. First one we've ever had on the show, an important mm -hmm. job. How many times a day or a week do you get called out to fight a fire in a time like that? Um, it really depends. You may not have a fire for a couple of weeks, and then you may have two or three in two or three days, uh -huh. or even a day. Sure. And yeah. you, you like that work? Yes. And you're also a paramedic as well, right? Yes. Which we goes hand in hand with the job. Best. Sure. All right, Bob, how are you feeling? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let Jeremy spook you. You know, he, okay. he was here and he, he did all right. And wife Angela behind you there. Nice to see you, Angela. All right, Bob, you ready to go? Let's do it, all right? You know the rules, you know the lifelines. 50 50, ask the audience, phone a friend. It's all here for you. So if you're ready, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? $100. According to an old expression, ignorance is what? Lucky? Silly? Bliss? A way of life? C. Ignorance is bliss. Yes, it's bliss. You're right for $100. For $200, if you're caught crossing the street illegally, which of the following might you be charged with? Sleepwalking? Jaywalking? Speedwalking? Treason. Well, I've actually been charged with this. Really? In San Diego. Not that anyone in New York does this. No, you never <laughs> see it done here in New York. Um, it'd be B, jaywalking. Yes, and it's the right answer for $200. $300 question. Here it comes. What is the word for an agent who recruits people for specific jobs at other companies? Hostess, bookie, headhunter, 99. That would be C, headhunter. Headhunter, the right answer for $300. $500. What is used to make calculations on the ancient tool called the abacus? Holes, matchsticks, stars, beads. That would be D, beads. Beads, the right answer for $500. You got it. Up to $1,000. Here it is, Bob. What street is associated with the department store chain Saks? Fifth Avenue? Tenth Avenue? First Avenue? 
Broadway. The answer is A, Fifth Avenue. Saks Fifth Avenue, final answer? Yes. That's what they call it, Saks Fifth Avenue. You won $1,000. You're 10 away from a million. All lifelines intact. Here we go for $2,000. What breed of dog was Rin Tin Tin? Collie, Spaniel, German Shepherd, Poodle. Remember Tim, Rin Tin Tin? That was a little before my time. Yeah, I'm sure it was, but he was a famous dog in the movies. That would be C, German Shepherd. Sure. Yes. Final? Yes. Got it for $2,000, German Shepherd. <laughs> We're going for $4,000 right now. The human windpipe is medically known as what? Gullet, trachea, esophagus, septum. Well, I guess my paramedic training is There you go. Off. Right down your alley. Let me have it, Bob. The answer is B, trachea. Final? Yes. Trachea it is for $4,000. We keep going now. Here it is for $8,000. According to their lyrics, what shoes do rappers run DMC wear to roam all over Coliseum floors? Adidas, Nike, Converse, New Balance. I don't listen to a whole lot of rap music, but I think I did have one run DMC album and they had a song about my Adidas. So my answer would be A, Adidas. Final answer? Yes. You're lucky you had that album, but you just won $8,000. All right, we're making some progress here. He's going for 16,000, seven away from a million and three lifelines left when we come back. Chick, Lancaster, Ohio, in the hot seat right now. You know, you got a way of answering a question that shakes me up. What's that? What's that? Yeah. I mean, you just kind of stare at me, and I figure, well, this guy, not going to get this. And then, bang, there it is. Bob, you're doing well. You're seven away from a million. You understand? Okay. All three lifelines are with you. We're going for $16,000 right now. Let's play. Here we go. $16,000. In 1998, what did the American Film Institute vote the greatest U.S. movie of all time? Was it Lawrence of Arabia, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind, Citizen Kane? Well, Saturday, Saturday morning before my firefighters bowling tournament, I stopped at the mall and Bought an almanac, um, New York Times almanac, um, and happened to read that section. And it, yeah. <laughs> um, I almost said the wrong answer. The answer is D. Citizen Kane. Never mind that. How did you do with the firefighters bowling tournament? Bob? Oh. <laughs> how, did you, how did you do in the tournament? <laughs> you don't remember? No. No. Oh. Okay. That's so, another story. That's another story. Let's stick with this story, okay. and you say the answer is Citizen Kane? Yes. And that's going to be your final answer? Final answer. And Bob, you are right for $16,000. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. I'm getting there. We're going for 32,000. Very important level, Bob. Yes. Get there. You can't leave with less than that. You still have all your lifelines with you. You're in good shape. Here we go for $32,000.
The Fianna Foil is a major political party of what country? France, Ireland, Belgium, Germany. I think I'd like to use a lifeline. What do you want to do? I'd like to phone a friend. Want to phone a friend? Good. Who's that? Dana Hiles. And who, what does Dana do? He's a firefighter also. Firefighter in your in, in your department. firehouse? Yes. Good, great. All right, AT&T, uh, bring us Dana, and you'll find him in Bob's Firehouse in Lancaster, Ohio. Hello? Hello, Dana? Yes. Yeah, Regis Philbin here, calling from New York City. How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. How are you? I've got your uh, fellow firefighter here, Bob Schick. Yes. Is Bob the smartest guy in that firehouse? Besides me. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> We're looking for a smart guy right now. We're glad we got you. Well, I hope I can help. Well, he's won $16,000. He's going for $32,000. So in a minute, he's going to come on, read you the question, the four possible answers. One of them is the right answer, okay? Okay. All right, Bob, good luck to you. You've got 30 seconds starting right now. Dana, the Fianna Fail, F-I-A-N-N-A, Fail, F-A-I-L, is a major political party of what country? France, Ireland, Belgium, or Germany? Spell it again. F-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Ireland. Ireland? Or Ireland. Are you sure? Yes. How sure? I'm sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Sure thing. Well, he said he was smarter than you. That's true. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Smart guy. Okay. All right. So he picked, um, what did he say, Ireland? Yes. I'll go with Dan's answer, Ireland. B. Well, he better be right, huh? There's going to be trouble be. in that firehouse out there in Lancaster. Absolutely. Is that your final answer? Final answer. Dana was right for $32,000. All right, so you used one lifeline. Good for Dana. You got $32,000. You can't leave here with less than that. We're going for $64,000. We're five away from a million. Let's play. By what name has television host Don Herbert been known since 1951? Buffalo Bob, Bozo the Clown, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Wizard. I'd like to use the 50-50. 50-50, all right. You want to narrow it down? Computer, take away two of the wrong answers for Bob, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Bozo the Clown or Last Mr. Wizard? Don Herbert. Um, I'm not for sure what Bozo the Clown's name is, but I know it's not Don Herbert. So my answer is D, Mr. Wizard. Final answer? Final answer. Yes, Don Herbert, Mr. Wizard, since 1951, you won 64,000. You won 64,000, that's great. We're going for 125,000, you're four away from a million. Here it is for $125,000. What was the second state to be officially admitted into the union? Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware. Second state. Well, I know Delaware was first state. I'm sure of that. I have an idea of who the state is, but since we're in New York, um, I'd like to pull the audience. All right, audience, Bob needs your help. Here we go. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, Please vote now. Fifty-four percent say it's Pennsylvania. New Jersey came in uh, second with uh, twenty percent. I had thought it was New Jersey. Fifty-four percent of the audience feels it's uh, Pennsylvania. So the audience is correct 92%. 92% of the time. 
I still think it's New Jersey, but it's hard to go against 54% of the audience. They're right 92% of the time. Right. Well, let's hope their percentage goes up. I want to say C, Pennsylvania. Boy, they better be right, huh? They better be. Oh, we're going to spray them with a hose right now. Yes. Want to make that your final answer? Yeah, I'll make it my final answer. All right, you had 64,000. Now you got $125,000. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna look at the $250,000 question. All righty, Bob, there it is. Quite a story here. Bob Schick, the firefighter from uh, Lancaster, Ohio, also a paramedic, and yes. as a matter of fact, in the course of duty, you saved somebody's life. Now, yes. when that happens, do you ever stay in touch with those people? Sometimes. Yeah. In this particular case? Um, in this particular case, the gentleman, we've had him a couple times since then, but the saves really stand out because you lose so many. Yeah, oh, really? So. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he never forgot you. All right, Bob, uh, you're going for $250,000. All the lifelines are gone here, and if you miss this, you'll lose $93,000. But we're in serious money here. It's a quarter million dollars. You ready to play? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's get on with it. Let's play for $250,000. Which of the following nations changed its name to Myanmar? in 1989. Burma, Kiribati, Liberia, Bhutan. Um. Let's try to work this one out. I really don't have a clue. All right, yeah, let's, let's uh, talk about it. I don't believe it's Liberia. I believe Liberia still goes by that name. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could be wrong. I was wrong about the audience, so. Um, I've never never heard of Kiribati. Bhutan? No. Burma? That's what I'm leaning towards, but this is a... A lot of money to risk on a hunch. Well, it happened 11 years ago, Myanmar. What would you do with this money if you wanted? Um, I'd like to buy some, some land in the country and, and build a home there. Sure. 250000 I'm sure, would uh, go a long way. 125000 would yeah. go a long way, too. Um, I'm sure this is one of the things I read in the almanac that I've forgotten the past two days. Mm -hmm. um, let's give someone else a chance. I'm going to stop at 125. Yeah? Yes. You sure now? Yes, I'm sure. Going to be your final decision? Final decision. Well, that's good. You won $125,000. The answer is Burma. You would have won 250000 But that's okay. That's all right. 125000 Hey, Bob, you were a great contestant. Good luck to you, okay? See you. Well, there's a man, a firefighter, who never dreamed of being on a television game show. He called our toll-free phone line, Qualify, was flown here to New York City, where he just won an amount of money that is going to significantly impact his life. We're happy about that. And you could be here, too. So when the phone lines open up again in a couple of weeks, why don't you just make that call, okay? All right, we still have seven more contestants ready to go. So here's the next fastest finger question. Put these films in order of their original theatrical release, starting with the most recent. Bird on a Wire, The Horse Whisperer, The Lion in Winter, Wolf. 
Okay, everybody, here we go. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent, and it was the horse whisperer, and then wolf, bird on a wire, finally the lion in winter. Let's see who got it right in the fastest order. The winner, Ron Tregero. Hey, Ron, congratulations. Thank you. Gonna win a million dollars? Yes. Yeah, all right. We'll be right back in a moment. Ron Fregaro from Carruthers, California. That must be up in the northern part of California. Uh, it's right near the center, actually, around Fresno. Fresno, all right. And what do you do for a living? I am a library assistant uh, Are you in really? Fresno County. All right, Fresno County. Mm -hmm. Good. Do many people use the library? Oh, yes. Good. Well, quite glad, a few. A lot I'm of I'm glad to hear that. Too. We've had some librarians on the show, and uh, they proved to be uh, good contestants. Who's your friend? Oh, <laughs> that would be uh, Mike Mueller. Uh, I've known him uh, for 20 years, an old college friend of mine. Uh -huh. What college did, uh, what school is it, Mike, that you're an administrator of? I work at the Mendota Unified School District. Uh -huh. All right, very good. All right, so Ron, you all set to go here? Mm-hmm. All right, you know the rules, you know about the lifelines. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire right now. For $100, According to the popular phrase, if you can't beat them, you should do what? Join them, wine them, dine them, throw a fit. Those are all good, but uh, I think you're looking for A, join them. You're absolutely right. You got to join them for $100. $200. Which of the following is the name of a popular vacation company? Sunset Dreams, Letting Loose, Club Med, Montezuma's Revenge. Ouch. <laughs> I believe that's C, Club Med. Club Med, the right answer. Yeah, $200. $300. What is the name of the force that pulls you to the Earth? Is it friction, gravity, magnetism, sleep? Uh, B, gravity. Gravity, the right answer for $300. $500, here it comes. What is the word for a candy or gift filled paper figure? that you strike with a stick to open. Panada, sombrero, burrito, shimichanga. Uh, that would be A, a piñata. Piñata, the right answer for $500. Here it is now for $1,000. What is a Geiger counter used to detect? Carbon monoxide, underground wells, radiation, metal. Geiger counter is used to detect radiation. C. Got it for $1,000. It's radiation. All right, so far, so good. Uh, up to $2,000. 10 away from a million. All your lifelines are with you. Here we go for $2,000. Where do the main characters work on the TV series Just Shoot Me? Sports show? Fashion magazine? Advertising agency, DMV. Um, I think just shoot me. The title uh, refers to um, photography in the in the magazine. And uh, and let's see. Yes, there is a fashion editor. Yes, that that is the subject of it. Um, B. Fashion magazine. Final answer. Yes, final answer. Got that one too for two thousand dollars. Now we're going for $4,000. Here it is, nine away from a million. The activist group, PETA, is primarily concerned with what issue? Drunk driving, smoking, handguns, animal rights. I believe PETA stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Yes, D, animal rights. Final answer? Final answer. Yes, PETA and animal rights, one of the same. $4,000. Oh, my gosh. All right, fine. We're out of time for tonight, but Ryan will be back here on Sunday night, and joining him will be 10 new contestants who have flown in from all over the country, and they are Carter Berry, Aaron Roca, John Van Schack, Tim Kirk, Shelley Boudreaux,
Stuart Pace, Tom Van Boris, Chris Wesley, Lisa Klein, and Troy Miller. Oh, we'll see you back here on Sunday night at what time, Ron? 9, 8, Central. There you go. Stay tuned now for 2020 Downtown. Coming up next on ABC. From New York, everybody. Good night.